Well, hello everyone. Today is August 25th. My name is Roger Scott and I'm the head trader for WealthPress. Today is August 25th. We have less than a week to go before the month is over. Schools are opening and closing just as fast. COVID-19 has killed over 800,000 people. But as I always say, let's get into it right now with the latest. Now, let me highlight the overnight events so that we can move forward and I can give you some context. Investors, they're still hanging on to hope the COVID pandemic is under control and the vaccines are being developed. Again, we don't know exactly when they're going to come out. We don't know how effective they're going to be. We don't know how expensive they're going to be. We don't know how available they're going to be. So there's a lot more questions than answers in the air. Few details emerged after a phone meeting held Tuesday by top U.S. and China trade negotiations as part of the phase one truce. Oy vey, aimed at ending a tariff war between the two biggest global economies. Chinese Ministry of Commerce said the two sides discussed strengthening coordination of economic policies. Its announcement gave no details. Now, here's what I think. I don't think we're going to get it. We're going to resolve this trade war. And I think the Chinese are hoping that Trump loses and that Biden, it all fizzles out. Or if Trump wins, then we're going to we're definitely going to see a lot more trade war tension. And if that's the case, guess what the number one sector that's going to fall? Technology. Now, if Biden wins, what does Biden want to do? He wants to break up big companies. He wants to regulate. What's the biggest sector that's going to, to uh, be under fire? Technology. Are you seeing the problem here? Biden, Trump, technology, either way you look at it. Here you have the trade war. Here you have the overregulation. So tech is not really looking that great on the horizon because of those two issues. I'm just giving you guys some, you know, heads up. So uh, markets have been hammered, hammered by this COVID-19 that's killed over 800,000 people, which is just amazing to think about it. Investors are waiting for a speech by the, our, our number one Fed, Jerome Powell, Mr. Um, I can't hold a secret if, if, if you put a gun to my head. I'd love to play poker with this guy. Do you remember the old days when the Fed would talk and not say anything? This guy gives everything away. The whole point of the Fed is to keep things tight. He, he This guy never heard of that, I don't think. S&P has gained about 1%. They're still rising to all new highs while momentum is narrowing. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to show it to you because I've been showing it to you almost every day. I'm sick of showing it now. There are, there's about 25 to 35% less stocks in the NASDAQ and the S&P that are causing the market to go higher. So the market is moving higher and higher and higher and less stocks are propelling it. That's called narrowing of momentum. And usually that precedes a nice, nice little, you know what? So be careful out there. Be careful, especially with, um, especially with tech, tech, the, 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 the um, NASDAQ 100 is just so overbought right now it's insane and uh, anyway signs that increase in COVID-19 cases around the world may be gradually slowing down are cause for optimism I know that even here in Florida it was my wife's birthday yesterday and my in-laws came to visit us for the first time in six months they live just five miles from here uh, they, they're in they're in their 70s and they have health conditions and so forth and so forth but it just shows me that the level of fear is, is starting to move apart. My folks were here, they're in their 70s. So people are starting to cool off a little bit. I don't know if it's just happening here in, in North Florida or if it's happening in other parts of the country, but I am seeing slightly less tension. I think maybe because subconsciously people are getting sick of it. And number two, they kind of understand that there will be a vaccine around the corner and they're kind of hopeful that things are coming around. Again, I'm not a mind reader. I'm just making assumptions here. But I wanted to show you something today. First of all, we've got a lot of news today. We've got consumer confidence at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We've got new, new home sales, and we got the Fed Manufacturing Index, which is not a huge report. But here's the thing. Consumer confidence is huge. Why? Consumers started spending again quite a bit. We are now past the level that we were last summer before COVID-19 hit. They're just doing it online. They're still doing it. They're just not going to brick and mortar stores. And consumer confidence is going to reflect on Thursday's GDP and jobless claims report, mostly on the GDP. But I think if the consumer confidence is positive, it's going to give a lot of credibility to the GDP. 
and new home sales are expected to be off the charts existing home sales new home sales they've been breaking records why interest rates are low and people are not spending their money there's a lot of people who are planning on vacations planning on on, on buying a lot of discretionary things that have been stuck at home for the last six months so what have they been doing they've been moving to areas that are le- that are more rural that have less people that have more more less COVID 19 cases around them people have been moving away from california in droves with the taxes and the homeless situations and the fires the point is there's a lot of moving around right now and refinancing and that money's coming back into the market it's not going into people's pockets so i believe the new home sales and the consumer confidence reports are going to give us big indications keep your eye on those two reports tomorrow we have durable goods and petroleum petroleum i wouldn't even, i mean we've got more petroleum than ever and 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 alternative energy is finally taking the world by storm well not by surprise or storm but it's it's a big trend that's happening but durable goods is going to be a big report and then we have jobless and gdp that's for thursday but keep your eye out for consumer confidence and new home sales and also for the fed manufacturing index that is not as prevalent but the new home sales and consumer confidence especially consumer confidence because i think new home sales is going to be off the charts but consumer confidence is very important again consumers make up two-thirds of the economy which is reflected in the gdp so pay attention now today i want to talk about something else when COVID 19 hit do you guys remember that healthcare and tech healthcare and tech tech because it's stay at home it's like the utilities of stay at home you know people needed water and electricity now people need their zoom and internet right otherwise how do you function but healthcare was also top if you look at the past three months and if you look at healthcare, five percent two percent but look at it over the last 30 days negative 39 percent if you look on the average healthcare is now one two three four five six seven it's even below consumer staples in real estate so healthcare is near financials and financials have been doing terrible i mean terrible i mean horrible so i want to show you something interesting because not all healthcare stocks are really doing well and if you look on a one month basis it's even lower it's below materials it's the eighth spot right now above utilities and energy and utilities right now are not that hot tech is hot right now that's the new utilities people need internet more than water these days i'm not kidding and then energy is just i'm shorting energies but i want to show you something that i'm seeing with the healthcare sector most of the stocks were going higher when we were being promised the COVID 19 um you know treatment and 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 the bad healthcare stocks went up with the good healthcare stocks but now we're getting closer to finally seeing what's going to come out who's going to come out with something and things are starting to shake out so we saw bio marin, marin pharmaceuticals we just saw it just crash and we were long this stock thank god we were long a couple of other stocks with it it was part of a cluster so we had we didn't have all our exposures in this but aside from bio marine i want to show you some something interesting that's happening that hasn't happened since february e-health breaking down breaking down hard okay asperian therapeutics another healthcare breaking down hard breaking lows acadia pharmaceuticals breaking down breaking lows zagenix that's a biotech healthcare for company it's breaking down it's not a coincidence ionis pharmaceuticals breaking down constellation pharmaceuticals breaking down now i want to sh- give you a perspective there's only 12 stocks that are breaking 90-day breakdowns that's what we're looking at 90-day break Th- this is 90-day high 90-day low 90-day breakdowns so these are all the stocks in the in the entire market that are making that have volume over 400,000 per day and have a price between 20 and 200 that have there's 12 of them on the on my list this morning okay i want to show you how many are health related one two three four five six seven and and if you look at the others you've got if you've got, you've got inverse etf that doesn't count inverse etf that doesn't count inverse etf doesn't count the only other stock you have other than biotech and healthcare this doesn't count it's the s p inverse is you have an energy stock and that's it and then you have inverse etfs 
that's it. You have a bunch of inverse ETFs. You have one energy stock from what I could tell. And the rest, you have seven biotechs or healthcare stocks making 90 day lows. These are stocks that you want to short right now. These are stocks that are, are, are basically saying, Hey, we're not adding anything to this whole COVID-19 environment. We're not going to help cure it. There's nothing in it for us here. That's the only reason these stocks would be breaking down. So again, you've got eHealth, you've got Biomarin, which was a long, now it's a short. You've got Asperian Therapeutics, ESPR. You've got Constellation Pharmaceuticals, CNST. You've got Ionis Pharmaceuticals, IONS. And you've got Zogenics. And you have Akkad Pharmaceuticals. This is not a coincidence, folks. It's not. When out of 12 stocks, and again, look, this is an inverse ETF. It doesn't count. It, it, of course, it's going to make a 90-day high because the Nasdaq's making a 90-day 90, 90 low because the Nasdaq's making a 90-day high. Same thing with short pro shares. The indexes are making all-time highs. So obviously, the indexes here, are, the inverse ones are making lows. So we can't count those. So every stock except for Philips, which is a energy stock, and energies are in the toilet right now in the crapper, is a pharmaceutical company. Inverse ETFs, which don't count because obviously if indexes are making all-time highs, the inverse ETFs are going to be making 90-day lows. That's just that's how it works. But look at this. A cat, Zagenix, Z- I- Ionis, Constellation, Asperian Therapeutics, eHealth, Biomarin, and this was a top, top, top stock. They're all going to crap. So that's telling me we're going to see a nice little shakeout on healthcare stocks. And remember, a lot of healthcare stocks in the NASDAQ 100, which is making all-time highs. So the closer we get to COVID-19 vaccine, the more shakeout you will see in these stocks. And we're seeing it right now for the first time since February in the healthcare sector. The sector that led us to all-time highs initially after COVID hit. Keep that in mind. And, and, and folks... This is very actionable info. I would start trading these stocks short. Matter of fact, maybe tomorrow, I'll give you a short trade with entry, exit, and options. And if you're really good, and if you give me good feedback on this video, post comments below this video, maybe I'll give you two picks. Let me know how you like these videos. Send me an email, support at marketgeeks.com. Comment below these videos. I want to get some feedback from you. Now, before I let you go, I've got something really, really important for you. For those who believe it's impossible to trade with perfect results every time, it turns out you might be wrong, wrong. Famous trader, hedge fund manager, Tom Busby. How can you not love Tom? Tom's amazing, right? He's discovered a secret trading calendar. It could tip you off about stocks that have gone up on the exact same day, year after year, for a minimum, minimum of 10 years straight. So imagine a stock, it goes up on October 1st, every year for 10 years. Wouldn't you like to know that name? I sure would. I wouldn't want to sell that stock on year 11. You're looking at potential to trade with 100% certainty on the decade. Right now, Tom got his eyes on 10, 10 of these stocks, and he wants to give them to you for free. To learn how you can access these trades, click on the link below, get the 10 trades, find out on 10 stocks what what day they go up every year or down. 10 years in a row. You can't miss this. You really cannot afford to miss this. When I first saw this, I was like, holy moly, this is really great. Perfect results, 10 years accuracy minimum to the day. And the results have been killer, 100% certainty on the decade. Folks, follow the link below. Get in on this now. Check it out. You've got nothing to lose, and I'll talk to you soon. And give me some feedback. Bye.